we looked at the tibia a little while ago, right? And I'm gonna feel really guilty if we don't also talk about the fibula. There is a little bit less to the fibula, so maybe brevity is the order of the day today, but fibula it is. Fibula, little ditty slender long bone that sits alongside the tibia in the leg. This is a left one, so I should stick to left things today. So we'll look at the bony bits. Um, we'll talk about the joints that it's involved with. Um, eh, we'll talk about the muscles that attach to it, but not in like detail. I'm going to try and talk about the groups of muscles so that you can work it out instead of having to remember a list of names. Um, is it right? Oh, and it's function. Um, the name of it, right? So the fibula is the name of the bone and the word fibula, you know, all these words are kind of like neo-Latin things, right? But fibula was a brooch, you know, like um, a brooch with a pin that you'd put on your clothing. Um, so the fibula represents the pin of the brooch when put with the tibula, tibia. That's why it gets called the fibula. Um, in Greek, per, peroni, peron is the Greek word for brooch or a clasp, the same idea, which is why the muscles of the fibula and the nerves of the fibula get called fibular or peroneal. One is from the Latin derivation, one is from the Greek. By the way, with peroneal, don't, you know, that's got an O in it. Don't mix up peroneal with perineal, which is different, right? Perineal would be up in there. Or perianal, which is similar again, that's also up in there. So be careful. This is why spelling's important. In fact, when we're talking about fibula, F-I-B-U-L-A is the name of the bone. Something that, the, something that belongs to the fibula, so the possessive version of the fibula is F-I-B-U-L-A-R, so we stick an R on the end of it. Same with the ulna. I see students doing funny things in exams when they're writing things down. Fibula, bone, fibular, nerve, belongs to the fibula. All right? So you look good when you're writing things down. So if this is left, let's look at the left leg of this skeleton. Uh, function of the fibula bone. Um, it's not weight-bearing. The tibia is the weight-bearing bone of the leg, and I think the fibula is so non-weight-bearing that you can actually take a chunk out of the middle, or take big chunks out of it, and use it for bone reconstruction elsewhere in the body. So its main functions are, it's forming the ankle joint here, this shape of the ankle joint that we've looked at before, that's a function of the fibula, and it's a site of muscle attachments. We've got lots of muscles down here, uh, and many of these muscles are attached to the fibula and the tibia and the interosseous membrane. So muscle attachments are forming the ankle joint. That's why it's important. Now, um, bony bits. This is the head of the fibula, and it has a neck leading to the head of the fibula, and the fibula has a pointy bit at the top, and the pointy bit gets called the apex of the head of the fibula. Now, the head of the fibula is a good bony landmark. You can palpate this yourself. All right, it's, it's a very prominent bony lump here, and um, one of the reasons that landmark is interesting is, you see here, so here's the head of the fibula here. This is the common fibula nerve wending its way around here. So if you can palpate the head of the fibula, you have an idea of where the common fibula nerve is, all right? Um, and then it has a shaft, and then the lateral malleolus down here, and the lateral malleolus, which you can also palpate, here, so the lateral malleolus, that is fibula, medial malleolus, that is tibia. So the lateral malleolus is the sticky outy, sticky downy bit of the, of the fibula that's forming this hinge joint for the ankle. Right, it's, it's, we've got to make that shape, 
uh, and the bone down here that it's then articulating with is the talus. So the talus is going to fit in there. So we need the tibia and the fibula to work together to form that joint. Uh, this means that injuries to the ankle, of course this is lateral, so injuries to the lateral ankle can also involve the fibula and cause a fracture of the fibula, fracture of the lateral malleolus and that sort of thing. So when somebody has a bad ankle injury, consider the slender little fibula because, uh, you know, it's at risk somewhat. Um, now the shaft has got a cool shape. It's kind of, it's, it's like triangular, like the tibia is, but it kind of twists as you go. So, on the left side still, so that's proximal, that's distal. So this is the, the head of the fibula here. And you see that, that shape there? It's got flat surfaces and it kind of twists as we go. So if we need to talk about the surfaces of the fibula, we talk about anterior, posterior, and interosseous surfaces. So remember that between the tibia and the fibula runs an interosseous membrane, literally, you know, into bone, in between the bones. There's a membrane here which is helping tie these two bones together. So there is, is little or no movement between the, the tibia and the fibula, not like the ulna and the radius, where we have loads of lovely movements, supination, pronation. These two guys are fixed together. Tibia is taking the load. The tibia, the fibula, and the interosseous membrane then become attachment sites for the muscle of the anterior leg and the posterior leg, the calf. All right, and we might talk about medial, posterior, and lateral borders, but you know. Joints then. So the head of the fibula articulates with the fibula facet of the lateral condyle of the tibia at the proximal tibio-fibula joint. It is a synovial joint, uh, a plain synovial joint. So we've got a couple of fairly flat surfaces that could allow sliding over one another. But in practice, that joint is tightly bound with tough ligaments covering the synovial capsule, whose job it is to, to limit, to impair any movement there and hold these two bones together securely. Uh, the, the distal um, tibio-fibula joint is a syndesmosis, a fibrous joint, you know, a bit like the the fibrous joints in the skull, the sutures there. So we have um, a whole bunch of fibers tying the, the distal fib fibula to the distal tibia and tying those two bones together. Again, limiting or preventing any movement between the tibia and the fibula. So proximal um, tibiofibula joint, distal tibiofibula joint. You have that interosseous membrane, which could be considered another joint between the two bones. And then we have the ankle joint down here. So we have the tape articulating with the tibia and the fibula that are forming the shape of the of that joint and that is of course a synovial joint and there are lots of ligaments and lots of things supporting the ankle which I'm not going to go into here because that's a whole ankle thing isn't it all right muscles um, okay the other thing in the um, right so if you look posteriorly there's a groove around here which is a groove for the tendon of some of these muscles uh, looping around here um, to get to the foot from the posterior compartment, just like we saw the tibia doing. Anyway, muscles wise, what you want to do is you want to think, well, there are three fibularis muscles. They're attached to the fibula, they're lateral, fibularis longus, fibularis brevis, that's a common pairing, isn't it? And then we have fibularis tertius. Um, so that's, that's these guys over here. So the fibular muscles are lateral. And then if we look at the anterior compartment, now we've got a muscle going over here who I'm not gonna mention. But anteriorly, in the anterior compartment, we've got muscles that extend the toes or dorsiflex the toes. And then we, you know, including the big toes, we've got a muscle for all the toes. And then we've got a muscle for the big toe. So we've got extensor hallucis longus. We've got extensor digitorum longus. Those are attaching to the fibula 
bone and the interosseous membrane and the tibia. And if we turn around posteriorly, um, forget gastrocnemius, that's uh, more superficial, that's this belly up here. But in here we've got soleus, that's got some attachments to the fibula, and then we've got tibialis posterior, that's got some attachment to the, the fibula, and we've got, again, thinking about the toes on the opposite side, we've got flexor, right, because flexor halicis longus and flexor digitorum longus. So those muscles of the deep posterior leg and the anterior leg are, have some attachment to the fibula and other bits in there. And the other one, which I think most people forget, is, look, so if the, the head of the fibula is here, Oh, look at this guy, he's a big guy. He's coming down here. He's, he's attaching to the head of the fibula as well from the top. This is biceps femoris of your hamstrings. This is your lateral hamstrings. The biceps femoris also has an insertion into the head of the fibula amongst other things. All right, so those are your muscles. So you see how the fibula and then that interosseous membrane between the fibula and the tibia are actually really useful for all these muscles to attach to. And we need all these muscles so that we can, we can control the ankle and the foot um, for our bipedal locomotion that we rather take for granted. Is that it? That's it? The fibula, um, where it is, its functions, bony bits, joints, and the muscles that attach to it. All right, you've been done. That's you, done and done. See you guys next week.